Chinese government's intention is very clear. They want to get rid of the Uyghur Islam. They want to uh, get rid of Uyghur ethnic heritage. It's, it's very simple and very clear. In Western China, a large minority are silenced as they're brutally subjugated by the state. And most of the world leaders, they're not even batting an eye. Extreme surveillance, accounts of torture, and the detention of up to a million Uyghur is all part of what seems to be China's attempt at eradicating the Uyghur identity from its borders. Descendants of Turkic peoples, the Uyghur are part European and part Central Asian. They inhabit Xinjiang, or East Turkestan, as it was historically known. Their food is cosmopolitan and delicious, with influences from China, Greece, Persia and Arabia. They have a vibrant folk dance called Sanam, and a language that can be written in the Arabic, Latin and Cyrillic alphabets. It's a beautiful culture that China exploits to boost tourism, while also suppressing the people who make it. See, the Uyghur follow Sunni Islam and want independence from China. China has been trying to change this for decades. Back in 1949, Mao Zedong's Communist Party took control of China after a deadly five-year civil war and immediately invaded a disputed Xinjiang to prevent Russia from taking it over. Religion was considered incompatible with communism and so a crackdown quickly began on all expressions of faith. Uyghurs were punished for praying in public and found their mosques demolished or converted for other uses. With the help of government money, China's dominant Han ethnicity began to migrate to the region in the 1950s. They built settlements and set up the most successful businesses in Xinjiang. The Han now make up 39% of the population, a number that's steadily increasing. So we've seen a thousand percent increase in Han population since 1949. Uyghurs see the Han folks as coming to take their land and to kind of transform their societies. It's a really kind of a classic settler colonialism situation where they see these people as invaders and as occupiers of their land. Poor Han across China routinely move west to work for the Bingtuan a paramilitary group that takes over land and resources taken from Uyghurs by the government. Established in 1954 by Mao, the original Bing Tuan were soldier farmers, off-duty servicemen who were put in Xinjiang to defend the province from Russia. Russia became less of a threat, but the organization grew. It's now 3 million strong and operates more than 2,000 companies in agriculture, energy, security, finance and media. The Bing Tuan administrative divisions enforce the central government's anti-Uyghur policies whilst they profit from their annexed land and resources. They exported $6.7 billion worth of goods in 2017, including nearly a fifth of the world's ketchup and tons of cotton to luxury clothing brands. What's more, Xinjiang is extremely rich in fossil fuels. The region has an estimated 150 billion barrels in oil reserve 40% of China's coal, and the Tarim Basin also provided 23.5 billion cubic meters of natural gas in 2017. These raw materials are transported to China's manufacturing hubs. It's a multi-billion dollar process where everyone benefits except the Uyghur, who are excluded from many employment opportunities and in some areas make only $12 a month. Because almost all these jobs and these resources were going to Han settlers, Uyghurs felt dispossessed. They felt like our land is being taken from us, these natural resources are being taken from our land and we're not benefiting from it. The real consequence though was that the, the cost of living began to really explode. So because there was all these new Han settlers coming in and they were making quite a bit of money, the prices of products began to rise and so just basic staples became a lot more expensive. Uyghurs, because they were excluded from the job sector, weren't able to get the revenue they needed, the funding they needed to buy those new products and so their, their level of poverty actually increased. For the Uyghur, this inequality and discrimination has led to sporadic bouts of violence towards the Han. In the 80s and 90s, separatist groups coordinated unsuccessful revolts against China. More recently in 2009, over 200 people were killed in riots in the capital Urumqi. And in 2017, three knife-wielding attackers killed eight people in Guma, southern Xinjiang. The government now burn identifying QR codes into all knives purchased by Uyghurs. 
A handful of Uyghur have also been recruited by violent groups like ISIL and Al-Qaeda, giving China a chance to justify their actions against them as fighting terrorism. But the authorities are treating any expression of Uyghur identity as part of what they call the three evils. Separatism, terrorism and religious extremism. Uyghur women have been banned from wearing the hijab and young men are not allowed to grow long beards. Fasting is prohibited, as are certain Muslim names for newborns, and parents are forbidden from providing their own children with Islamic and Uyghur education. Youth under 18 are not allowed in mosques during sermons, and the Quran itself must be approved by the state, meaning the text is altered to fit the Communist Party's ideology. The Hajj pilgrimage is also not permitted, as there's restricted freedom of movement. Many passports were seized in 2016, when Chen Chuanggo was given authority over Xinjiang. His last job was leading the crackdown on dissent in Tibet. Xinjiang today is essentially a well-funded police state in which the Chinese government uses advanced technology, propaganda and fear of imprisonment to control the actions and thoughts of the Uyghur. Friday morning, you get up, try to uh, go to mosque. The Chinese government uh, stops you. They force you to go through iris scan, full body search. And then you go into the mosque and you look up to Xi Jinping's picture to pray. You're not supposed to have somebody's image in the mosque, but they worship the red flag and Xi Jinping's picture in the mosques. In 2017, China spent $8.5 billion to monitor every aspect of Uyghur life. Xinjiang is littered with thousands of cameras, many with facial recognition technology, and vehicles are registered to track any suspicious movements between areas. Wi-Fi sniffers and a mandatory mobile app regularly scan Uyghur devices for content deemed politically incorrect. Uyghur are forced to provide DNA samples, biometric data, and personal information on their religious lifestyle and relationships. The state then decides whether they're safe and the information is tied to an ID card that must be presented at checkpoints, fuel stations, and even supermarkets. The Uyghurs who are found to be not safe are sent to prison or to re-education camps. Human rights groups report that there are over a million Uyghurs in these internment camps. China calls them vocational training centers. People put here are accused of extremist behaviors, such as marrying in a religious ceremony refusing to watch state TV, or even a slight change in routine, such as purchasing more food than usual. They force people to, you know, raise the Chinese flag outside their home, to post posters of Xi Jinping and other leaders in their home. And also when they go into people's homes, they, they check to see if there's any Islamic imagery on the walls, any quotations from the Quran or, or you know, pictures of a mosque or something like that, uh, which is something that many, many Uyghurs had before. If they see any of those things, then they say, oh, this is an extremist person or it's an extremist suspicious person. <laughs> Sessions in the camps include praising President Xi Jinping, studying communist propaganda and criticizing their own Uyghur language, culture and religion. There have also been accounts of people being tortured, beaten and even killed in these camps. China denies any breach of human rights. But there could be another reason why countries are failing to speak up. China is in the preliminary stages of the multi-trillion dollar Belt and Road Initiative. It's an ambitious infrastructure project that spans over 60 countries and aims to make it easy for the world to trade with China, mostly through Xinjiang, the homeland of the Uyghur. China could be indirectly buying the silence of many of these nations. The countries involved will receive loans in the millions of dollars to develop structures, roads, railways and pipelines. And this may be enough to make them turn a blind eye to the plight of the Uyghur. No one is speaking out, particularly in the Islamic world. Where is Saudi Arabia? Where is Turkey? Where is Iran? Where is King Abdullah of Jordan? Where is the outcry? The Chinese government is calling you religion as a mental disease. Where is the outcry?